Live on Talk Radio. Late Night with Christo Fufas on Talk Radio. Good evening, it's Christo Late Night here on Talk Radio with you until... One o'clock, we're talking about whether France were right to publish the Charlie Hebdo cartoons. Where is the line on free speech? The line that doesn't incite hatred, but the line that is allowed to parody religions. Is there a comparison there between the way in which we don't parody race, but we do parody religion more easily? O three double four four double nine one thousand. Lots for us to explore tonight. Amjal Mazroor is an inarm and joins me live via video link. Evening to you, Amjal. Ajmal. Good evening. Ajmal. Sorry, Ajmal. Thank you very much indeed for correcting me. <laughs> right. uh, thank you very much indeed as well for taking the time to talk to us tonight no here on Talk Radio. Um, what is wrong? with me holding up cartoons on this radio show, parodying Jesus, parodying the Virgin Mary, parodying Muhammad, parodying all different types of religion. Nothing wrong in my view. You can do as you like. It's your right and it's your choice. It's, of course, a human, um, basic human rights, and that is that we all should be free. In France, I don't think the problem is to do with cartoon necessarily, though the cartoonists become the symbol of freedom and the struggle against extremism, I think we have to ask the bigger question, which is, why do we see an endemic level of racism against the French Muslim nationals, which has been going on for years? French government has done everything possible to make the Muslim citizens of France feel second-class citizens from denying their basic right to practice their own faith freely from wearing a headscarf if they wish to, to go, shutting down mosques and schools, arbitrarily taking actions against Muslims. So it's not about necessarily the right to have cartoon or caricature of any person. It's to do with the fact that France has single-handedly failed its minorities. It's taken it, their rights away. It's mocked them. And it's created a society where Muslims are feeling marginalized, singled out, excluded from the mainstream and not allowed to even discuss or debate their views. And if they do, they get penalised and prosecuted. Why, so that's the problem. Why was it then, do you believe it was the right decision in response to the beheading that took place of the teacher for showing those Charlie Hebdo cartoons to the class in a, a lesson about free speech? Do you think that the French authorities, Emmanuel Macron, was right or wrong to show that then uh, billboard of the very same cartoons as a response to that, to show France's commitment to free speech? Look, France is free to do what it wants. It's not a problem. I don't have an issue about the cartoon. You know, I don't believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or any of the prophet that I believe and revere from Jesus, Moses and many others would ever have their honour reduced but because some ignorant people decided to uh, caricature them in a derogatory manner. It doesn't, to me, reduce the esteem. In fact, it increases for me reverence that I have for these people, for these prophets. If France, French president decided to respond to the cartoon uh, uh, caricature and therefore the killing of the teacher, that's his right. We have to also ask, why is Emmanuel Macron doing this? It's because he's been a miserably failed president. He has failed the mm -hmm. French economy. He has failed to make take control of the coronavirus in his country. The Yellow Vest protest has been going on for two years. The country is on its knees. And Emmanuel Macron, instead of focusing on national issues, issues of bread and butter for his citizens, he decides to jump on a bandwagon almost conveniently and singling out Muslims again of his own country, as the problem, do you know? But uh, but, but, but if Christo, a sorry, no no no, if a Muslim though a radical Muslim carried out that attack in response one, to free one, speech, one, one. Well, then why wouldn't it be completely appropriate to take that cartoon and say, well, fine, we're going to show that cartoon, which probably should have been done actually in the Charlie Hebdo attacks years ago. That that, that France should have been done problem? that. How does it solve the problem? It shows the rest of France that free speech is allowed and that if you wish to parody any religion, including the Islamic faith, then in a free speech society that that is fine. 
That is not true. Because, for example, you cannot parody the Jewish communities. It's not allowed. It's called anti-Semitism. You cannot parody French uh, flag. One guy mm -hmm. uh, uh, did a parody of French flag and made it into toilet tissue. Mm -hmm. A law was enacted in France to make it a, a criminal offence to parody the French flag. If, uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron took offence to, uh, what's his name, the, uh, the president of Turkey calling him needing his men mental health checkup. Hmm. He took offence. So we can't have inconsistencies in freedom. If I'm free, I should be in France allowed to be anti-Semitic. I should be allowed to be racist. I should be allowed to criticise all religion. I should be allowed to denigrate and d d discredit the French flag. But I will not be. And you know what? I don't support such freedom because I think that's nonsensical. There is freedom and there is freedom with responsibility. Emmanuel Macron has actually stoked a terrible, unbelievable uh, environment in society. It's called creating a hostile environment in France. There was no need for that. He could have contained this like a magnanimous leader. Let me give you an example. You know, Nelson Mandela, when he came out of the prisons after 26 years, white communities who had subjugated him and his people for so long, and he became the president of South Africa, he could have caused bloodbath by saying black people will never be trampled upon. But he didn't do that. He became the saint of our century because he was a true human being with compassion and humility, not arrogance, ignorance and belligerence as we see in Emmanuel Macron's behavior. Would you believe, Christo, I received messages from French families saying we are extremely worried about our children when they go back to school, about the mental health issues of our children, constantly being mocked by the state, constantly being mocked by the media, constantly being mocked and bullied by their friends just for being Muslim. How does that help France and Fr France's progression to liberty and freedom? If anything, it denigrates it. it. If anything, it shows that French president is not only shallow, but he's silly. He's childish. He's like a but, petulant see, child. I, 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 think I think you're completely way off because this, is is a, because this is a response to a radical Islamic attack on free speech but, but around hang on, hang on. that what makes you cartoon. Think, uh, Christo, what makes you think it's a radical Islamic attack? Let me ask you this question simply because the, well, Islam, the word Islamic is completely an oxymoron to the description of the act that you're suggesting. This is well, a, then a terrorist Well, why, why are people from Islamic countries then calling for the for the boycott of French products and calling for, as you outlined yourself, those are Islamic countries. So, of course, no, it's Muslim connected. Countries. No, hold on. Let's get it right. They're Muslim countries with Muslim majority population. They're not Islamic countries. We need to be very clear, careful with the terminology. The word Islam is an adjective. So if I behave in a particular way, I can use Islam to measure my behavior. Fine, they are majority Muslim countries, but Fine. they still come from that particular So, so let's, let's ask you this question. 1.8 billion Muslims of the world yes. are saying, Macron and please, the world, respect something that we love very dearly called the Prophet. Why can Macron and anyone else accept the right of 1.8 billion people's sensitivity? What would be so wrong in saying, you know what, I have compassion for you. I'm a human being. I love being a because, human. Because I'm someone's part free part speech trumps race, your... Okay because a, a, because a person and a nation's free speech trumps your right to be offended. Now, there were no, there were no majority Christian countries that came out and called for the killing of anyone after Life of Brian was was released. You know, uh, Jerry Springer, the opera, F uh, the Father Ted, Dave Allen, um, uh, the Pope must die, nuns on the run. I mean, did, did any of those result can in... I, can, I, can I just say to you that what you say, I am with you, that nobody should be calling for anyone's killing. Nobody should be killing anybody. The terrorist attack that we have seen in France and in Nice is abhorrent, is completely un-Islamic. It is not at all sanctioned by Islam. And we already know that. We've covered this ground for the last 25 years. We've been saying the same thing. What we're talking about is something more and uh, very specific. Freedom of expression is absolutely right. But no society gives us freedom of expression in an absolute manner. Why am I not allowed to desecrate the French flag? Why am I not allowed to be racist? Well, you should be able to. I mean, I, I would, I would, I would get rid of of that law. But you cannot well, compare, and yeah. Mal, you cannot compare someone's desire to enjoy a religious belief, which is a choice, to offending someone over their race. A race is not a choice. A okay, religious let, belief. You know, I, I, is... I, I agree. I agree with you, hundred percent. I agree. I'm on the same side. I face racism. I'm talking about freedom. 
There is no absolute freedom in the world. We are responsible human beings. Just like we're not allowed to desecrate a flag of France, we're not allowed to desecrate or condemn um, uh, or belittle our queen in our country. There are some rules we have to abide by. And in a civilized world, when you're talking to me, Christo, just like you would not swear at me because you think your guest needs to be honoured, mm -hmm. I won't swear back at you because your listeners are listening and I think there should be some rules that I need to abide by. In the world where human beings live, we need to all be kind and tolerant of one another. What we're seeing in France isn't about freedom of expression. I am for freedom of, of, express, of expression. What we are seeing in France is a defiance against, I believe, their innate, endemic, absolute institutional uh, uh, dislike and disdain of Muslims and Islam. And it's prehistoric, perhaps, to the modern France. It is to do with the colonial past. You know, Macron is telling us how freedom of expression is so important. Macron should not forget his own history. The millions of Algerians the French killed, the brutalization of black people when they were enslaved by French. Please don't give us a lecture about what is freedom. Freedom is to give human beings dignity. And, and what, would, what would you say, Ajmal, to people who are saying, well, no, what you're doing... You're taking a response to a, and you might not like the expression, but it's how it is being viewed, a radical Islamic attack. And what you're it's saying... It's not Islamic attack. Radical extremist attack. Get it right. A radical extremist attack as a response to offence caused to the Muslim community in France, because that is what the whole of this debate is about. Some people will say, look, you're conflating a wider issue that's taking place in France. And what you're doing is you're comparing apples and oranges, when in actual fact, this is a response to a terror attack on free speech. And the only way you respond to free speech being attacked is to display that free speech. It's got nothing to do with France's wider history. It's got it nothing has. to do with anything else. You Did are you, know? uh, you are you justifying know? something terrible that happened in France by trying to look at the wider picture rather than saying, you know what, absolutely, that free speech should be allowed. You know, I said that at the beginning of my my my, my but, but true, but with caveats, question. with some no, look, caveats, I, I respectfully. Have to, I have to give you. I can't be in denial. I have. I was invited by a Fra French Catholic Church to speak in there at a conference in France. There is so much free speech in France that I wrote an article calling Tony Blair's conversion to Christianity within uh, Anglican to Catholicism fake. And I called Tony Blair. If he wanted to really convert, he should have converted to Islam. That was an article I wrote and it was published in the Guardian newspaper. It was it was sent to French Catholics. They took offense to it. They uninvited me as their keynote speaker. Truly speaking, we don't have absolute freedom in the world. We have to be sensitive to other people. And I'm sensitive to other people. I also believe in freedom of speech. Last week in my Friday sermon in my local mosque, do you know what I said? I said thousands of times Prophet Muhammad was insulted, mocked, derided, kicked out of his own home. His companions were killed. Did he ask anyone to take revenge or retaliate against those who mocked him? Never. He forgave them. So Muslims stand for forgiveness. 1.8 billion people do. One or two deranged individuals who do, we condemn them. No, but we also, also there are many, many, many people from either majority Muslim countries or who have the Muslim faith who, who mm. would protest at that. There were, when they, do you remember in, uh, when there were cartoons uh, uh, that were published, I think it was in the Netherlands, Denmark, there were huge effigies being burned in the street, huge protests against those cartoons being shown. You cannot tell me that that is a to uh, showing tolerance towards free speech i think i think there is a misunderstanding here on your part perhaps free speech is not to insult everybody and anybody around you free speech is for me to be compassionate and be responsible for what i say that's free speech so just like i'm not going to swear at you you're not going to swear at me that's free speech i'm saying what i want to say and i'm making my point very clear i even told you christo i think you got it wrong i said it politely yeah. and i'm very grateful that you accepted it that's called free speech. But if I swore at you and your back was against the wall, you won't listen to my advice. You would say, who the hell are you? So I'm saying we can create a civilization based on dialogue, understanding, compassion and acceptance of one another, even if we're different. And please make let me make myself very clear. I completely and absolutely 1.8 billion Muslims of the world would stand with me to say any murder, any killing in the name of Muhammad or God is not acceptable and it is not from Islam. I agree that this is the stand and statement we are making, but we cannot forget that France needs to sort its house and put it in order. Did you know more than 70% of French prison population today are Muslims? Yet 
percentage wise, Muslims form no more than 5% of French population. Why? There is a problem in France. It's called discrimination. It's called racism. It's called Islamophobia. And unless we are dealing with it, we would be tinkering in the periphery and not dealing with the problem. I would like to eliminate any attack on any country, any threats of attack on any country. I'd like to be free because I believe freedom is a central part of human right. life. But I also believe in dignity and honour and respect. OK, Ajmal Mazroor, who is uh, an inam, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us uh, tonight here on Talk Radio. We've gone a little bit late to the news because we wanted to give equal time to both of those guests. And, uh, well, we'll throw open the calls to you coming up next right here on Talk Radio. Talk Radio. 